Hi, OEM members. Happy Easter Sunday to you all. He is not here. He has the reason. Our lives have changed a lot in a few weeks. Related to our work, trip, dance, finances, and etc. The novel coronavirus has really slowed down everything about our lives. So everything has changed and slowed down. But one thing remains same forever and that is God's steadfast love. Because of his love, his word remains the same where it says in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And Isaiah 48 says, the grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. And also, if you see in 1 Peter 1.25, it tells us, the word of the Lord remains forever. Why? Because we see or read in Hebrews 13.8 tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This unchanging love gives us hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we see in 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4, there it tells us, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfailing. Today our Easter celebration will look very different this year due to the coronavirus, not only at honoring this ministry, but throughout the world. But there is a good news for all of us from the graveyard, which is imperishable and unfailing. Because of Christ's resurrection, we have a living hope, whether your life is locked down or out of control. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember it provides hope to have a relationship with Him. It brings the assurance that death is not an end, but the beginning of beginning of new life. So from today's passage, from Matthew 28, 4 to 8, I want to talk about two things. One is for non-believers and another is for the believers. So the first good news from the graveyard is an invitation to come and see. The first thing, an invitation to come and see. And I will read for you Matthew 28, uh, verse uh, 5 and 6. Matthew 28, verse uh, 5 and 6. There it says, But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. The angel invited the woman to see not the risen Christ, but the empty tomb. So we see in, as we read verse 5 and 6, we see here the angel's announcement or the message that he is giving to the woman. Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. And he says, he is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. So the angel invited woman to see not the risen Christ, but the empty tomb. Mary Magdalene and other Mary went to see the tomb. As soon as they went, they could see something different. The earthquake took place and the angel rolled back the stone. We see here the stage is set for a marvelous event that is going to take place. We may think about the Lazarus in this moment. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face rubbed with a but Jesus did not come as Lazarus had come. Nothing like that happened with Jesus here. Rather, it clearly shows that 
the resurrection has taken place already while the tomb was sealed the tomb is empty also the stones were rolled back not for jesus to come out of it rather it was to go and see for those women before the angel invites the woman he says do not be afraid the woman must have feared because of the roma words the earthquake and the angel's dazzling appearance must have frightened them but anyway they went to the tomb at the same time who likes to go to the graveyard today people those who go there at least they will have some kind of fear in their heart but at that moment as they were frightened and fearful the angel came and told them not to fear if you see here god's grace had come to mankind in a new and powerful way the women were not rebuked for their fear but comforted and encouraged fear not do not be afraid he is not here he has reason that's the news angels brought to those women fear not there are three reasons why the person who seeks after christ should not fear because god knows the person who is seeking after the messiah he knows the movement of every heart the person who seeks diligently shall find and that's what matthew 7 7 tells us but from there you will seek the lord your god and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul that we can read in deuteronomy 4:29 fear not because christ has been crucified to save every man and if we read romans 5:6 it tells us for while we are still weak at the right time christ died for the ungodly fear not Christ is now risen from the dead and conquered death. If you read Romans 4, 24-25, there it tells us, But for us also, it will be counted to us who believe in him, who raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. The angel told the woman to come and see. it was an invitation to believe yet the angel reminded the woman of the lord's words is reason as he said and also come and see can mean to witness the woman were told to come and see the place shows that they were eye witnesses of his resurrection do not look for the living among the dead my dear brothers and sisters that day the woman went to look for the dead body today many want jesus to remain in the tomb as the pharisees requested pilate posted a guard of roman soldiers at the tomb to keep it locked and secure the tomb was guarded and sealed to keep jesus locked inside today the same thing it ha- it's happening the world wants to believe they can keep jesus locked in the tomb so that they don't have to believe in him but resurrection is the fundamental truth of christianity which you can find in no other religions that is why when you take this gospel when you take this good news to other people people do not like to hear this good news whereas christians are being persecuted by those who do not know that jesus resurrection is true and he is living today this is the son of god his death is true his resurrection is true even his second coming is true for christians that death is not the end rather it is the beginning of the life here the message for the non believers is to come and see that is believe you come and experience see and find yourself discover yourself that jesus christ is not here you must believe 
believe his word believe his promises believe him when you believe in him you shall not perish but you will have everlasting life and that is the promise that we can see in john 3:16 where god has given to anyone who believes in him to not perish but have everlasting life there is an invitation to all today the choice is yours to come and see come and discover come and believe the word of god says taste and see that the lord is good and the message for the believers is to become a witness of the lord's death and resurrection if you have believed be a witness of his death and resurrection we knew that the women were comforted and and encouraged while they were afraid are you st still looking for him in the tomb have you seen the empty tomb have you encountered him personally come and see that is the invitation to all of us today if you believe that he is risen then the angel also tells us to go and tell the good news is the the good news here is he is not in the tomb he has risen they were not to keep to themselves rather they were instructed to go and tell others just as we are still to do today and that's the second point that we can see there is also an instruction to go and tell once you come and once you came and saw as we read verses 7 and 8 we know that there was a clear command for the woman which came with a responsibility what was it that they had to do where did they have to go and what did they have to tell verses 7 and 8 clearly tells us what they have to do where they have to go and i will read for you there uh, verse 7 and 8 Here it says, "Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you." God said. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. The angel commissioned. the woman to tell the disciples making them the first to proclaim the good news of the resurrection the resurrection is the basis for the redemptive work in verse 7b it says is going before you into galilee the next part there it says there you will see him that is the promise that this disciples will see not just the open tomb but the reason christ this guarantee this guarantee the woman they would see the resurrected jesus he was not simply raised from the dead he was raised to continue his relationship with them with us today so now it's our turn to hear the call to go quickly and tell the glorious news whomever we meet sharing the glorious news is essential it is the greatest news of all history christ is risen he shall meet you and you shall see him there are several things we can note here the first thing we can note here is the women obeyed they became the very first witnesses for the risen lord when angel told them to go and tell to the disciples they simply obeyed and that too they did not walk they did not take time as the word of god says they quickly ran it shows the woman obeyed what angel told them and the second thing the discouraged believers or the disciples were the first ones whom the woman were to go and here the discouraged believers or disciples were to be encouraged and start to join the great force of witnesses as the women have witnessed already the witnessing will lead to worship 
when we witness as we read in the bible in, the, in our passage today as the witness disciple worshiped him the disciple adored him whether you are one of the women or one of the disciples when you meet the risen lord you worship him it will your eyes will be open and you will be humble yourself when you come and see and when you go and tell others people will join in worshiping our living god and they worship was a spontaneous and heart heartfelt response to the good news that he has risen and he lives today it was the worship of adoration and it was the worship of submission and they were this they, they submitted themselves to worship him you may wonder where to go and tell today whom to tell or what to tell no we know he is not here he has risen but still then we find difficulty to share same thing that he is not here and he has risen there are millions of people out there who do not know jesus and even who do not believe that jesus is alive today let us tell them this glorious good news it can be our family members it can be our friends or co-workers or neighbors or maybe anyone we meet randomly you know when we tell this good news the next thing what happens is they will join with other saints of the lord to worship him in awe and submission look into the following verses of the chapter 28 we come to know that as disciple worshiped him what did jesus do jesus gave them the same command that he gave the angel gave to the uh, woman that we read in 28 19 where it says i will read for you 28 19 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy. Where we see the disciples are to go and make disciples. This is the same for all of us today, that we are to go and tell the good news of the risen Savior. Never ever think this is the responsibility of pastors, missionaries, evangelists. Rather, this command or this imperative is to all who believe in the risen Savior. Once you have tested, you cannot keep quiet. You cannot stay frozen. Rather, that's what the angel said. Go quickly and tell the disciples. Tell others about it. With fear and joy, they run to the disciples. and told the good news the same way we are to go and tell to the people that he is no longer in the grave let us go and spread the good news that jesus is alive today if you have met the risen lord and it's your responsibility it's my responsibility that we must go and tell there are many people who have to hear this good news if we don't tell them their direction is for hell so as we have tested as we know as we have experienced the reason law how can we keep quiet by not uh, not telling others about it so if you have not met the reason law then test and see that the lord is risen and that is the invitation that we have heard today come and see believe in him and once you put your faith in jesus christ the next responsibility is to go and tell this is the sunday the message that was spoken to the woman at the tomb is also ours today come and see realize and experience the truth that jesus has risen from the dead to reign in our hearts by grace through faith in him alone Receive the gift of gift of eternal life today. That is offered to you if you will call on the name of our of our resurrected Lord. 
and you will be saved. Then, like those first faithful women who followed the command to go and tell, we too must keep going and telling everyone we can. That our Lord lives. The tomb is empty. Eternal life is a gift to be received. And the light of Christ can shine in our lives to the glory of God, the Father in heaven. So today, will you come and see? Will you experience the risen Lord? Will you believe in him that he has risen? He is not here. Will you test and see that our risen Lord is good? Do not turn away to an empty life of dry bones in the grave of your own making when Christ is offering us the gift of becoming living souls, rising out of the graves of our empty lives that are dead in trespasses and sin. Truly, he is risen today. Some of you need to come and see, while others need to go and tell. Today, what will be your response to the empty tomb? Will you go and see? Will you go and tell? May God, Resurrection Lord, bless us through this short meditation. Let's pray. Lord and Father, we thank you and praise you for this uh, wonderful day you have given us. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your son who came to this world, who lived among us, who died, who was persecuted, who was rejected. But as he said, he will rise again. And he did on the third day. What a marvelous and glorious thing that we can see in your son's life. And that is that is offered to all of us today. But we thank you and praise for making this offer for everyone thereby who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's the only one thing makes difference from other religions. There are many tombs still as it is. In the tomb of Jesus we find nothing. Rather, he has risen. He is not there. Lord, we thank you and praise you and help us to accept and believe in you and accept you as our Lord and Savior. Thereby, we can worship you and glorify your name in submission, in awe. Lord, we thank you and praise you for everything. Lord, we continue to pray for our OEM members. Bless all the members. And you protect them and strengthen them as they are, they are at home. Being with, with the, being with the family members. Lord, I pray that you bless them and use them for your glory and kingdom. We thank you and praise you for everything. We ask all these things in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.